Um, the other thing that we need to do, if there's no questions about that, is look at the derivatives of the other trig functions, because we only have two of them, right? We have uh, we have the derivative of derivative of sine x is cos x, and we have the, the derivative of cos x is, and it really would have been again nice if it worked out this way, but doesn't is minus sine x. You can actually generate the other four if you know this information here. So if if you're given the fact that derivative of sine is cosine, some of your differentiation rules like product and quotient, okay? Product, quotient. And then math 12 stuff, um, you know, like tangent is, I mean, some of you picked up a formula sheet last time and probably even got started on this, but reciprocal and quotient identities, right? Um, you need to know that cosecant x is 1 over sine x and that stuff. You, you can grab a formula sheet if you don't remember some of these ones. 1 over cos. Cotangents, 1 over tangent. The other two, the quotient identities here. Tangent is sine over cos. And cotangents the other way around, right? So if you have those five things, okay, if you have those five things, you have these sort of, I mean, identities with the, the derivatives. And then you have your differentiation rules, product and quotient rule. You can generate some of these derivatives of the other four. You can almost do it like a like you did a trig proof, right? If we want the derivative of this, derivative of tangent of x, you can say that's the derivative of, since we know the derivatives of sine and cosine, if you write that function in terms of sine and cosine, then you could work your way down to what it is. That's what I'm thinking you'll do here. I don't want to do it for you right now, but if you you know look up here at some of your identities, you write it in terms of sine and cosine because then you can then you can kind of work through it um, and come up with what it's equal to. It's not going to be that the derivative of tangent is cotangent and that sort of thing. The same way it's going to be funnier looking expressions. Try working through those. The reason I put this is because I thought if you've done this one, you don't necessarily need to go through and do that one. So you could do it where you work with another person and you each do one or you could work together on them and do them both or whatever but these two are very similar and these two are very similar they're going to turn out to be very similar can we try working through those you're starting with derivative of this equals derivative of okay use a trig identity or something and you'll get what it's equal to down here You want to check the first one just while you're working on it, I'll write the first one out here maybe. You make that sine x over cos x. And then use the quotient rule.
Uh, you could stop at one over cos squared if you want, but they normally write it in terms of so it's not a quotient. It's easier to work with if it's not a quotient, if it's not a reciprocal or a quotient like that. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. I know that that sort of troubles people, and I don't know if they realize why. It's probably because suddenly there's a power in it, right? You start with tangent, you ask for its derivative. Its derivative is secant squared. That's just the way it is. <clears throat> I have to make sure to show off people's nice work uh, on the video. Even the even the artwork. <laughs> okay, so being able to summarize them, right? You probably know the two we started looking at last time. You probably got those down now, right? The connection between the other ones. Okay, did you manage to write the other four out here? What's the what's the derivative of tangent? What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared, and if you know that one, this one is very similar, except it has a negative. And what's secant? What's the derivative of secant? Secant times tangent. And cosecant was as a negative, right? These three over here are all negative. Negative cosecant cotangent. I'm pretty sure you can deal with that, right? The last few things in here, I want you to try working through. This is not anything new, right? Finding a tangent line, finding a normal line. If a function looks like this, that's obviously a quotient. This is one that um, you're going to have to work with a calculator anyways. So I don't care if you work through algebraically to use the derivatives. Right, like it wouldn't hurt to do it both ways, but find the derivative algebraically and then find any values you need numerically. And uh, that way, right? Because if you're trying to find the tangent line at two, you just need the derivative at two, evaluate it at two. You can do it two ways, right? Do it numerically using that function, as in, you know, numerical derivative of this at two. But then maybe also do it algebraically, like you have to go to the calculator anyways, but compare the two and see that they give you the same thing. Remember, you're wanting a number for the slope. You don't want it, you, you're going to get some expression when you do it algebraically, but you want to actually sub in a number because you need the actual value at two. Uh, and then there's some other ones here. I asked you to do this two ways because the, uh, the long way is to do that as a quotient. The short way is to change the function first before you find the derivative. Right? 5 divided by sine x, you can write it so that it's not a quotient. It's a lot easier if you can write things not as a quotient. And then finding the second derivative of this. Um, and then we're pretty much done. And you can work the rest of the time on working on this assignment if you want. Or finishing this, moving ahead to the next thing. So what's the due date here? November... 23rd, I think, Tuesday, you can do it.